What's going on guys, it's your boy Turbite Reacts here and I'm back with some more One Punch Man, okay, season 2 and as you guys know, I'm binge watching this every chance that I get, okay, so today we're gonna do these 5 episodes, I don't know how many episodes are left in the season after this, but we will be caught up after I watch these 5 episodes okay so we're doing 7 through 11 okay um as i said i don't know 7 through 11 yeah i don't know if if there's going to be more episodes or less than last season that the um season one was 12 so I don't know if they're going to do 12 again or maybe they're just going to continue with the series because th the series does deserve continuation if they're not planning to change studios again. You know what I'm saying? Like it deserves because there's a lot of material for this as I understand from, you know what I'm saying, the manga, the web series, whatever you want to call it. Um, from what I understand, there's a lot more material that they can keep going with the anime but if they want to take a break that's fine too that's okay it's it's no issue nowadays it's very few anime that is going year round year round it's very few you know what i'm saying like back in the day of naruto bleach um i think one piece is probably the only anime right now that is doing it doing anime year round and you know it's loaded with filler so um yeah, so I don't know if they're gonna continue it or they're gonna do if they're gonna do like a a full lens season that we're used to, which is like you know twenty three, twenty four episodes, or they're going to do twelve, a half a season, then give us part two next year or later this year. I don't know what's going to happen, but all I know is this: this season is fire so far. It has been really good. I really do like it. Um, it, it really does speak to, you know, going in with an open mind can do for you sometimes, you know? So, because we all thought, you know, cause from what I was hearing was that a second season was going to be down because it was a new studio. I think they called JC staff, um, that the animation was going to be, you know, terrible. You know, judging from the trailer, it was not impressive. It didn't do it any justice, to be honest. And we were, I, I just went in with an open mind. I said, you know what? If it's bad, it's bad. I still, I was still enjoying the story aspect of One Punch Man and who Saitama is, who Genos is. The characters that were introduced was really good. You know, Atomic Samurai, Metal Bat, all of these heroes that has been introduced. And then we come to the second season now, and man... As JC staff proved us wrong that it, you know what I'm saying with the introduction of Garrow um, now we're in this tournament um, with Saitama and you know in this tournament for money or whatever the situation is there that's a story for them and then you got a bunch of monsters attacking the city that Genos is trying to deal with um, also and he's trying to um, did he, he left right I think he left the stadium because he wanted to see Saitama fight <laughs> Um, but he didn't, I think he left to go deal with some monsters because, well, that's his duty. Um, also we got to see how metal bat powers work, which is, um, which was very surprising to me, it was very surprising to me. It's, it's, it's like, <laughs> it's like his engine get revs up. The more he gets hit, the more powerful he gets, you know what I'm saying? So it, it was like, and now it seems like Garrow is going after, the the dog i think the the um the one that dresses like a dog um the hero the s-class hero that dresses like a dog so i want to see how that turns out i think that's how episode six ended if i'm correct i'm not a hundred percent sure if i remember correctly it could have been episode five too huh? um but i know gara is going after him and also his 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 former teacher is looking for him bang and his brother is looking for garrow because they want to um, they want to stop him because he's not necessarily killing anyone. He's just beating up these, these S-class heroes, making, you, you know what I'm saying? Making a fool out of them, really, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think 
Methyl Bat would have put up a challenge if his if his little sister didn't show up. I think it would have been, um, I think he would have really hurt Garo on that last hit too, before you know his little sister came. You know he he doesn't want to do um violent um violence in front of his little sister, which is understandable. It's a promise he made to her. Um. Um, so in another, in another sentence, I mean, I wonder if she, if she's soft too. Cause I mean, you know, genetics, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that would have been dope if she, if, if he had, if he continued to attack metal bat and she stepped in and was like, and <laughs> stopped his hand and like, no, <laughs> that would have been unbelievable. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so that was that. Um, every everything that's been going on in season two has been has been really cool. Um, so far we haven't seen anybody that really did anything to Saitama. You know, he's still one punching people. There's still nobody on his level yet. So hoping that if he does get to fight Garo, um, in this season, you know, would hope that it would be something really cool i i still i want to see him against bang and his brother of course i want to see that fight i also want to see if he could take genos too so we'll see how things go um right now he's not a indestructible character garrow where i could say okay he can stand up because we already saw the first confrontation between garrow and saitama it was saitama knocked his ass out so it's, at this point i don't think he's a match for him um, so we'll see. He's getting his ass beat by S-Class heroes just the same. It's just that he's, he's really, he's beating them too. So we'll see what happens. So we're going to jump into these reactions, man. I'm hoping that, um, my One Punch Man videos get some more views this time around. Last time didn't do, um, as well as I would want them to. But, hey, as you guys um you know share the videos like the videos however you whatever you want to do comment i'm just doing this is just a show that i enjoy so i'm uploading it but i still want i still want people to be interested in my videos i know you know it's a super reaction whatever and you know whatever the excuse is you know what i mean um of um maybe there wasn't you know because nowadays it's like from what I'm hearing is like, if there's no ads on your videos, YouTube is not going to promote it. It's not going to put it in. Nobody's recommended. And it's not going to do that. Man, forget about YouTube. <laughs> as far as I know, I'm just doing this for fun, man. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys for the review. Remember, link is down in the description. If you're new, link is down in the description. Go watch the episodes. And then we will come back here um, and watch my review of these five episodes okay thank you guys so much i will see you guys for the review all right so let's talk about it man episode seven through eleven was litty <laughs> to say the least you know what i'm saying um the highlights Let's talk about the highlights because it's five episodes i'm not about to go through every single detail of what just happened we just watched it right so um highlights what happened in the arena the end the conclusion with um shiryu whatever his name is um his is is mini arc i would say his mini arc was a arc of for him to understand you know why heroes do what they do and i think at the end of his arc he came to a a a sense of acceptance right a sense of acceptance when it comes on to him accepting heroes for who they are and why they do what they do um through seeing what saitama can do realizing that Sa saitama is a hero the one that he couldn't beat in the tournament you know and ended up asking Saitama to be his disciple. And of course, you know, I didn't expect Saitama didn't even want Genos to be his disciple. You know what I'm saying? But, you know what I mean? Reluctantly, he accepted um, or never really accepted to be to be honest. So I didn't expect him to to accept Siri. It would have been a surprise because people just keep 
coming into Saitama's life, you realize because of who he is, um, people just become friends with him. And that is a trait of a true leader. Like you don't have to like it's it's in a comparison to use a comparison like myself is like that. Like um because of who I am, because of the type of person that I am, I I um draw people towards me and sometimes you know i draw the wrong people towards me or people you know take advantage of who i am and 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 what i represent and all this other stuff for their own personal gain um sometimes i catch it too late sometimes i catch it early but because of who i am people just automatically just they just draw um, I create this draw because, uh, you know, because of how I treat people, you know what I'm saying? I believe in loving everybody and all this other stuff, but it's the same thing. Like true leaders, great leaders, like they don't have to go out there and give speeches for people to follow them because people just acknowledge who you are and the type of person that you got, that you are. And they just want to follow you. They want to follow in your footsteps, learn from you so they can become great leaders too. So it's like, I understand when it comes down to Saitama, him not wanting the attention, but he gets it because of his actions, right? When he gets serious, see how mad he got when Siri when talking crap about the heroes and stuff like that. Like, he did not like that. I knew he would not like that. You know what I'm saying? So, it was very cool to see how Siri react. Now, we got a little bit more information about the monsters, the monster association, and what you're doing, how, how you know, humans are turning into monsters. So that was pretty cool to find out um, about these monsters um, and and what they're about. They basically want, their, their end game is to end humanity, let them go in, extinct so they can live I don't know, in a world without humans, right? So, but um, other than that, the next highlight is, of course, the last two two episodes, episodes 10 and 11, when um, when um, the fight with Garrow. We're not going to talk about how Saitama bodied him <laughs> again, right? With just a kick. So, um he's he when he gets knocked out by Saitama he doesn't wake up for days okay so he woke up he's damaged of course so this is um Gatling is the um class A hero that went to go get him tracked him went to go get him with the little boy still in the freaking um in the cabin or whatever they were in their secret hiding place like they call a secret base right so um, as I said before, I think in the last reaction, I was talking about Garrow that he's not without heart. Like he is obvious. He has heart. He's still human, even though he wants to be this monster. You know what I'm saying? He still has a human side to him that he's not really killing. As I said, he's not killing anyone. He's just beating people to a pulp. You know what I'm saying? He hasn't killed anyone. He still has a heart. He's trying to prove that monsters can beat heroes. That's his game. That's what he wants. He wants to be acknowledged as a monster that beat up heroes that I don't know if he really wants, you know, kids like him to come about. You know what I'm saying? Um, but he's not unique in that sense. To be to be honest, this is not he's not unique to that. There are people that watch anime and root for the bad guy like there's a ton of people that, um, you know what I'm saying? When I was watching Naruto, a lot of people love Madara. They wanted Madara to win. They wanted Madara to win. They wanted Obito to, uh, um, Obito. They wanted him to win. They want these bad guys to win. A lot of Sasuke fans, they they loved him when he went off the rails and just was just taking out everybody. His fights against the the Raikage, all that stuff. They root for that stuff. They love the bad Sasuke. They don't love the good Sasuke. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's it's not he's not unique in that sense. As in growing up cheering for villains, like you know what I'm saying? Is is like. But the thing about it is that it's true. What they told him is like, listen, the the bad guy will never win. Because if the bad guy wins overall, because yes, they win some battles, they kill some people, you know what I'm saying? They beat some people up. They do get those wins, but ultimately they're going to lose in the end. Like if the, if the, um, if the protagonist is not defeating the antagonist, then what's the story about? 
you get what i'm saying like if you're gonna write a story where the antagonist always wins um most people are not going to watch it but then again most people might watch it you never know because there's always that hope that the protagonist will win or is the antagonist the protagonist you know what i'm saying you get what i'm you get what i mean so somebody could write a dope story like that maybe there is an uh, anime or you know tv show whatever that's out there that's like that right now but i don't think there is because i've never heard of anything of anybody writing a story like that there's always a protagonist that wins out in the end whether they be an uh, anti-hero or what how they go about things you're always rooting for the protagonist um you know or, um but you do have people um very small you know not very small percentage but there is a percentage out there that roots for the villain so he's not unique in that manner i understand where he's coming from you know what i'm saying because he's you know at one point they did a flashback where he was he was saying um that but he was so close you know and then he got outnumbered by three heroes and it's the same situation that he was in where he was like fighting six six different heroes you know what i'm saying and he took out all of them he took out all of them and that's why i said like all in all he's a dope character i love his character because you know what i'm saying he's putting up that challenge he's taking it to them you know what i'm saying so I give him all the props in the world, but he still can't beat the protagonist of the entire story, which is Saitama. He, he can't measure up to him. So I'm glad that he's going up against these kind of like second class generals showed up and he can't handle generals. He can't like every every you can see that he's no match for generals at this point. So it was a pretty dope fight. I loved it. Um, if you can't take out generals. You definitely can't take Saitama. Saitama has already shown. I don't think there's going to be a fight between them. I really, I think that, um, in a way, I don't know how this is going to go, but I think, I think, Bang, I think Silver Fang is is going to f this dude up, because that's your teacher, bro. He taught you everything you know. Even though he's he's kind of adapting other styles, so I don't know if he's going to use those against Bang. So I don't know how this fight is going to go, but I but I'm definitely going to be watching that, of course. So I don't know how that fight is going to go, but it's going to be a dope fight. They have done. They're doing a very good job with the animation. Um, it's. It's it's not as good as as the first season. I'm not talking about content wise. I'm talking about animation wise. It's still not as good because there's a lot of cuts and stuff like that that's unnecessary. There's no f there's there's um there's not a lot of flow, and that's the difference when you know about good animation and you know not so good animation. It's good, you know what I'm saying? Because you know the sound effects, um, you know, and it's pretty dope. It looks great but if you notice the difference between what they're doing and what madhouse was doing um in 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 um in season one madhouse does a lot of things that are, that are, that i noticed that a lot of studios don't do there's that flow of animation i remember there's this guy out there that is renowned i don't remember i don't know his name but I, his name always comes up when it comes out to dope he, he animated he was the lead animator he was the lead animator on Attack on Titan. That scene that we just saw, Levi versus um, Levi versus um, the Beast Titan. He did that. He did um, he did a lot of the fights. There was a there a lot of the fights, like the ending, um, Naruto versus Sasuke, um, the last the um, the last fight. Um, in the end, the second one. Um, I don't know if, I think he was involved in the first fight between Naruto and Sasuke too, but you guys should know who I'm talking about. He's renowned, like in the anime community. I just don't remember his name right now because he's Japanese and his names are weird sometimes, um, for me to pronounce. So it's, it's, um, but I know, so it's like, I know he wasn't involved, um, in season one. I think he animated the, the, um, in the end, and I think he was involved. I'm, I'm not 100% sure on this, but it's the stuff that I hear sometimes. Um, I think he was involved in the fight between Saitama and Boros. I think he was a part of that too. So a lot of times these studios, they bring in 
um, these top-notch animators to do things. But it looks like a lot of these great animators, they work for Madhouse. So it's like, it's it's crazy when they bring in these guys and you can see the difference. You can see that flow of animation is so different. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's not as crisp, but the flow is just, is just flowing. Like, you know how we love that 60 frames per second. You know what I'm saying? It's just... It's flowing, it's flowing, it's flowing. Like you can see the action, just like how I'm moving right now, you can see it, you know what I'm saying? And there's not a lot of cuts. In this with JC Staff, they have a lot of cuts in their animation, so you don't really get to see that flow, you know what I'm saying, of the action, you know what I'm saying? You don't see that hand-to-hand -hand combat going on for too long, you know what I'm saying? And they use these cuts, and they do this in movies too. They do it in movies too, something that I don't necessarily like when they do it in movies because then it just all over the place, and the, the action just seems out of place and not really real they do this there's no flow to it and that's why you know a lot of stuff now you've seen um in movies where they do these these um these one shots you know what i'm saying for fight scenes um these one shots where it's just one camera just moving around what's going on they shoot it one time and they get everything one time and there's no cuts that's dope i love when they do stuff like that but they don't do it all the time so for this as i said man it's just a notch down um, it's still enjoyable, as you can see. I'm loving it. They're doing a really great draw, uh, a really good job with animating these episodes of One Punch Man. As I said, I don't know how many episodes is left. Um, hopefully, there's more than one. I don't know how many episodes are going to be in the season. Of course, you guys are going to let me know in the comment section, of course, how many episodes are left in the season. Um, thank you guys for watching, as always, man. It's always good to talk about One Punch Man. Thank you, guys. I'm now caught up, so I'll be doing weekly episodes when they come out, just like Attack on Titan, until the, until the season is over. So thank you, guys, for watching, for supporting. Um, all you guys that are sticking it out with me. Again, I apologize for all the cuts today in, in you know, got interrupted a couple of times. Somebody was at the door, and uh, and also somebody, you know, my mom called me. When my mom calls, I have to answer, Okay. Um, so thank you guys for watching as always. It's your boy Terabyte Reacts and peace.